As I do these blogs, uh, I share stories from my life, Samantha's life, uh, and they usually seem to go over pretty well because I think you can relate to them. Today I want to share with you a story that just happened really recently. And just for the record, I, I'm 10 years into this recovery road. It's been a challenging journey. I share about it all the time. And this most recent trigger is kind of a unique trigger, uh, but it really caused me to do an exercise that I wanted to share with you because ultimately I want to encourage you. So here's what happened. I was invited to um, kind of be a part of this thing that's going on. I can't share too much because sometimes people that are a part of this thing watch these vlogs and I'm grateful for that, but it's going to be in code on some parts of this. So I was asked to do this. I was really excited, but I was reticent. I was really kind of hesitant. Samantha and I talked and prayed and we were like, okay, we'll do it. Let's be a part of it. We were excited. The excitement has dissipated a little bit. It's just been kind of a struggle. And so yesterday I was having this conversation, this meeting, and it started to go south. And I mean, it started to go south at record speed. I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I grabbed my phone during the meeting and I was actually texting a buddy of mine going, bro, I need, pray for me. This is going to go bad. We're going to have to process this after. And it really started to cascade into a point where I was like, this may, we may be on the way out. Like, I may need to start developing an exit plan. Like, oh my gosh. And so I came to this point after the meeting, I went uh, to the office. And I mean, I was having heart palpita palpitations. I was having like the whole experience of back in the day. And it was this huge trigger. And so let me outline to you the triggers that started to happen. Before I kind of give you the exact things that went on, I just, I want you to understand there was just this point where it was, here we go again. After I failed so miserably and after my life just blew apart, everything in me back at the office was, here we go again. And I'm sure you can relate to that. Number one is I immediately was like, you know what? Screw them don't need them, whatever. I don't need this place. I don't need that. I don't need them. I was fine before you. I will be fine after you. And it wasn't a confident, courageous, secure, hey, you know what? If, if this is the end of it, well, it's been fun. It was a, you're the problem, not me. The second defensive kind of trigger was, well, I don't need you. I don't need you. You don't need me. I, I'll move on down the road. I don't care. Then it cascaded into the third one, which was a, oh no, I have blown it. I've done this. I've overstepped my bounds. I was too critical. I just, I have blown everything up. Samantha's going to kill me. Everybody's going to think I'm a failure. Here we go again. The public persona, the, all the baggage that was used against me, is going to be used against me again now. Here we go again. Oh my gosh, I'm a failure. I'm a train wreck. I'm not really healthy. What am I doing? Why am I even vlogging? What is going on? You'll love number four. Number four was, God, this is your fault. I didn't want to do this in the first place. You made me do it. It's your deal. Why would you bring me to this situation to just have it fail miserably all over again See, God, I told you I shouldn't have done this. If you don't believe in God, you still know what it's like to have this point where you're like, I knew I shouldn't have done this. Yes, it may have been 10 years, but I can still be a basket case if I forget my recovery. I say all this and I give you this story and this background to help you as a betrayed or to help you especially as an unfaithful to teach you a principle. 
As you get into recovery, a year, two, three, four, five years, ten years, there's going to come a point where you have to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I am not there anymore. I am not him or I am not her anymore. And I had to have this moment. You know, all those things that I just laid out and the emotions and the heart palpitations and all that, um, it, it was about an hour. Now, years and years ago, it would have been a two, three, four, five day deal, but it was about an hour of processing. And I had to have this kind of moment. And I talk about self-talk, encouraging yourself, soothing yourself. I had to have this moment where I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Let's not forget the recovery that we have worked so hard at. I am not that guy. I am not living that same way. I am not living a double life. I am no longer there anymore. I am here. I have momentum. I have healing. I am not that insecure, aggressive, rejected, nightmare, fiasco anymore. So I say all this to say there's times in your recovery when you've gained some ground, unfaithful or betrayed, you have to take a stand against all the voices and the accusation and you have to say, wait a minute, I am not there anymore. I am not him, I am not her. I don't live that way anymore. It is a new me, a new situation, a new environment. I'm, I've got to watch over my heart. The Bible says watch over your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. If you don't subscribe to faith, you still have to watch over your own heart. There's a quote that says, take heed to thine own cesspool within. You have to be aware of, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, 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 uh. It's just a rough day. It's just a rough moment. I have not lost the momentum of my recovery.